Hey guys, we are here in Tennessee uh, starting off our May uh, client trip and wouldn't you know it, we are rained out. Uh, so again, here in the motel, shot some stuff uh, on the farm this week, uh, but we are, uh, like I say, um, you know, running wide open. We are uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, accomplish as much as we can on the home farm um, when I'm home and also the cabin build uh, and of course, um, you know, uh, two two weeks, three weeks out of the month, where uh, I'm with clients all over the country. So, it's been a great year so far. We are going to dive into this one, guys. Uh, it's a it's a topic that's brought up a lot, um, asked a lot. A topic that uh, you know that we we touch on with uh, clients uh, all over the country, and it's something that I I really really believe is a part of your design, part of your plan, and part of your future, um, and the profitability, huntability, all of that uh, when it comes to your farm. Um, now, you know, the number of these uh, vary, but what we're talking about is we're talking about how to create and uh, some some uh, kind of highlights and bonus features on what I have done uh, over the last several, several years with the mock scrapes and the licking branches. So we're gonna flip right to it, guys. We're gonna go over this. I've got the kind of a top 10 question, uh, or top 10 topics labeled out to touch on that all tie to that. And then also I've got a couple of, uh, you know, uh, uh, drawings. Um, and uh, we're gonna walk through this and kind of uh, show you some stuff on the farm that we've done, you know, over this, uh, um, not only here in Kentucky, but you know, back in Michigan, all over the country, wherever we hunt. Uh, each stand has one of these, obviously, so that's what we're going to touch on tonight. I'm going to bring a couple of those uh, good, valuable points, um, and uh, so to help you guys learn when you're when you are implementing these, like this month of May, uh, you know, putting your water holes, your licking branches, all this stuff is starting to come together on your farms. Uh, I'm going to, you know, kind of highlight a couple of these. What I feel the way you should do uh, with these licking branches to get the most power out of them. All right, guys. So we are uh, talking about, like I said, creating a mock scrape looking branch. Um, a couple different options that we've got. Uh, option A here, if you're lucky enough, and like we always, you know, we always joke, but you're never really, uh, you know, lucky enough to have the perfect stand, the perfect uh, limb uh, to use at every at every uh, stand location for the looking branch. So what I've done is I've kind of broke this into a couple options that we, you know, I, I see and that we use. So option A here, guys, is just that having, having a limb off the tree that is, you know, right directly over a trail and, and having that, you know, um, work just perfect. So you have one of those big heavy duty limbs above, above that. Um, so, you know, far away from the tree as you can. Uh, you know, like I should have put that on here, I guess, but you know, maybe 10 foot. I like these 10 foot circles around these areas, whether it be water holes or licking branches, uh, so the deer can come into them from any any way around. They don't feel pinched in, right? Uh, but what I'm going to touch on here tonight with you guys is this one of the one of the things to remember. Um, you see a lot of you know different ways. You know, some folks uh, back a side by side a four-wheeler, uh, whatever that case is, up to the, um, sometimes up to these looking branches when you're putting uh, them up and you have the availability of a limb there, like I said, which is cool if you do. A lot of times I find, um, you know, about 50-50 if it's going to be there or not to use. If it's there, uh, one of the things that I highly recommend doing is, uh, one, of the, one of the things that we recommend doing is on the implementation of them is running the uh, you know tying that off to the top of the of the um, the the uh, vine the licking branch running it up on the on there and instead of just tying it off here which is fine if you're doing that but what I do guys is I actually loop it around there a couple of times so it doesn't slide down the limb so it stays over the the whole object or whole goal is here guys to keep that vine over that licking branch over your mock scrape area. Uh, so if you do that, what you can, um, you know, one, one thing to to make sure it stays there is I wrap that around a couple of times, the rope around. 
we're going to touch on the paracord that I use over here on these topics, the top 10 topics, or, or uh, you know, a list of those, uh, what paracord I use. But on the diagram here, guys, as far as that, you'll see I loop this over there a couple of times so it doesn't slide down. And then what I do, instead of tying these off, I do, and yes, it uses more paracord, um, but I, I, I do this for a reason, kind of a trial and error over the years. What I do, guys, is I, so I tie this off, go up over the limb a couple of times so it doesn't slide, and then I run the rest of the paracord down to the tree, to the trunk of the tree itself. Now, I don't run that too low so it's in their way or anything like that. I try to run it up, let's say the limb is... Uh, you know six eight feet ten or ten feet eight ten feet off the ground I try to run that up there as high as I can I tie that off there and I leave some extra uh, extra paracord tied to the tree and, and the reason for that is guys is this if something happens to this and you need to replace this you got to back over the, the scrape you got to you know put all your scent at the scrape and what I do um, is I tie this off over here so and I like I said I leave four or five six feet of extra um, paracord there so I can come behind the tree undo this and lower this let's say the end of it breaks off or they bite it off or or something happens um, but the scent is still on it what I do is I come over here and loosen it up and then raise or lower this as it goes you never know um, leaf out when you're hanging these guys remember when the leaves are all on the tree the limb itself the limb is going to be lower because it's heavy the leaves fall off that that's going to raise so if they raise and it, you wouldn't think it's that much but them leaves are pretty heavy especially if this limb isn't too big to begin with so as that limb uh, raises it's going to raise your your licking branch up too high so that's a tip there guys run that over the tree tie that off loop it off over here something that you can walk up and adjust that the uh, raise and lower that just a tip that I that I've used years ago on uh, with option a here uh, so a couple things to touch on here guys is like I said to make it longer the better the longer it is the, the vine itself the higher this branch is the more it looks natural you don't see this rope um, and you know that rope's not um, getting obstructed they don't, you don't have to worry about it, them getting wrapped up in it stuff like that right uh, so the longer of that the better I always say the vine itself I cut them I start cutting them at uh, 8 to 10 feet and then I tie them and I make this the way I want it and then I just trim the bottoms so a uh, little tip there for you if you're going to cut them cut them long don't cut them short I've seen uh, some clients um, and videos done that these are about two foot long, a foot long, and it just, it's too much rope. It doesn't look natural uh, or paracord. So what I do is, like I said, I cut them six, eight, ten foot long, and then uh, just trim them. Um, so with, with trimming that, let's, let's touch on that. Uh, the mock scrape itself, what I do is I, from the scrape, so from the dirt to the bottom of the licking branch, I like to have them 36 to 42 inches off from the ground to the to the licking branch. In other words, if you stand next to it when you first initially build it, it should be about you know uh, hip high, waist uh, belt belt high, something like that. Uh, so uh, let's touch on this. A lot of folks um, like to put these off from the line of travel. Now they are a magnet, guys, but um, they work best if they are in an intersection. If they are in a, um, you know, a line of travel, whether that's a new promoted line of travel, whether that's a, um, you know, an existing trail, something like that, you want to start them there and then promote the line of travel. Uh, will they go 5, 10, 12 feet, you know, to get to them? Yeah, I've seen that happen. I've seen them walk 20 yards to it. Um, idea behind it is, is to make it in their way so they stop and they communicate with it so all of the scent is on that hence the reason that we hang those um, 36 to 42 inches off the ground so all of the deer can touch them uh, so moving on here to option b uh, what we have here guys is i use this quite often when you know uh, when you don't have the limb up above this is one of the ones that you can um, you know this is one of the ones that you can um, do as well uh, we've got option C and there's actually an option D here as well we're going to talk about it if we have time here on this video so as we're going um, here guys this is the one where uh, you know you have about 10 to 20 feet you have no limb up here to use what I do is I put the paracord on the tree 
have it in a line of travel open up the scrape so I know exactly where this is going to be. I used to do guys as I used, used to take the paracord from tree to tree and tie them off make that banjo tight so you didn't get you know 10 foot off the ground as you can see there guys so it looks natural and just tie the uh, you know rope or tie the vine right to this. Well what happens is guys this becomes a zip line if you if this is not if you can knot that on there the best you know have the best knot in the world and with, they get really wrathy with these licking branches and they will slide that up and down that when this vine leaves that mock scrape they're not working together so what i do is i bring this over and i actually stand in the scrape right here as i'm standing in there i will take a uh, pull it down and so i know when i you know tie it back off to the other tree there that knot so i make like a three inch four inch loop in it and knot that off so that that loop is not going to go away and then I stretch it to the other tree and like I said make that banjo tight so you hang something on this it's gonna sag down right so you need the further this is from tree to tree the tighter this has to be um, so run this over there and then tie it off to the tree after that loop is in there that loop then is where you cut your 10 foot uh, you know licking branch your vine um, your you know oak sapling you know anything but pine is what I, I don't recommend using pine. It's, it's the theory is anything that they rub on in your area. But when you use pine, guys, it takes, excuse me, it takes from the scent because that uh, pitch is, uh, is very, very, um, you know, uh, smells, it kind of overwhelms the, uh, the scent and it kind of defeats the purpose, right? So what we're doing is we're uh, cutting these 10 foot long first, and then we're trimming these same, same way, 36, 42 inches off the scrape. Um, in the trail again option B. That's how we use that one number one Cut the vine with pruners not a chainsaw. Why do we do that? You cut it with a chainsaw you have oil on it and uh, the oil will actually um, You know because the oil let's say uh, You know you cut it and that oil gets on the end of it the, They're gonna smell that and that oil seems to stick on there. I've had uh, something to think about there so number two, uh, 10 foot long to start with, they're three quarters of an inch. Uh, seems like half inch, too small, they like to break them, they chew on them. Uh, and then the when you get to an inch, inch and a half, two inch, they start becoming a club at that point. And I find that they don't uh, use them as much either. So kind of the uh, the one, um, you know, the, the sweet spot, I guess is what I call it, is that, uh, you know, three quarters of an inch natural i uh, got a, underneath it if you can find it with a little bend bend in it or it's bent just a little bit um that's a uh, kind of a great additive too uh so number three three quarter inch um atwood paracord and that atwood is the brand the paracord it's military grade uh, i get in there strong i get that um when i'm back in michigan and i'm in the claire area uh if any of you are familiar with claire michigan area I stop at uh, always, you know, go into Jay's, of course. Right next to Jay's Sporting Goods uh, is General Jim's. General Jim's carries it in bulk. You can actually, you can order it online as well. Uh, four is uh, 36 to 42 inches off the scrape, guys. Uh, we need to keep them low. You need to keep that at that height for that reason. We want all the deer talking to the scrape, not just bucks. We've all seen it, you know, on the edge of the uh, plots, uh, bucks using the scrapes. Yes, it's cool, it breaks, it goes away. Well, it's not so cool anymore uh, because they quit using the scrape, right? When that scent's gone, that licking branch is then laying in the scrape, they don't use it. Uh, number five, um, open the scrape underneath of it uh, to three to four foot in diameter. After you open that up, um, then, um, you know, that's kind of exposed that fresh dirt uh, and that seems to be about the, the, uh, the, the correct size. Number six, uh, limb uh, or uh, suspend, A or B. Them are kind of your two options that are you know most commonly used. We're going to talk about the other two here uh, shortly. Um, you know, suspending it or using the limb. Number seven, um, don't touch the lower part of the vine. This I try not to even do this. I try to wear gloves, and I'm doing it to begin with. Um, so, but I'm just as guilty as anybody out on the farm hanging them. Um, especially if you're going to be doing this right before season, then go in the extra mile and wear the gloves. Make sure that you're not touching them. It's number eight. Uh, I've got pee. Yes, pee in the scrape. Urinate in the scrape. 
that urination thing is a huge myth. Um, after 20 minutes, they don't, they can't deter uh, the difference between human and uh, any urine. Urine is urine at that point. And to believe, believe it or not, I don't think that they can um, um, deter it there because I've had clients, I've had, um, you know, uh, myself be, you know, be taking a break, if you will, when that's, when the deer walks in and is it, you know, something that you want to do intentionally? No, but, um, you know, peeing in the scrape puts that um, urea uh, in the scrape and really supercharges them. Uh, number nine, no added lure. Uh, that kind of follows obviously number eight, but uh, no added lure. Over the years, guys, I've found um, I don't use much lure at all. If you're going to use it, I recommend getting hold, hold of Tom uh, Witte at uh, Nature's Best um, there in uh, Michigan. He pan collects that, uh, and Tom's become a good friend over the years. Great guy. Uh, it's it's uh, because th when you're collecting that stuff like that, and yes, when I say pan collects it, yes, he's collecting it as the doe is urinating. But they know them does from a high fence ranch like that guy is a breeding facility. They know when they're in heat because they artificially inseminated them. So you know you're buying estrus. Now, do not, and Tom even sells this, but I don't promote that. Um, it's a it's a you know a gel that uh, tarsal gland gel. Well, like I said, I've never seen a deer. I've always tell, tell my clients I've never seen a deer stand in the scrape and uh, on his uh, front feet and put his back legs up on a licking branch and put his tarsal gland all over the licking branch. It would make a cool video, right? But I've never seen it happen. Um, I dress it up. So number 10, we're going to talk about dress it up here. This is the bonus. The bonus is this, guys. The bonus is, uh, we're going to a couple of things here. The bonus is using the limbs as a, using the limbs, or different limbs. I try to use beech uh, or red oak, something that hangs on to the leaves a lot longer than most. Uh, so what we do is we cut these limbs and you want to hang these, I cut them on like a V. So you have the main vine coming down and then, you know, cut the other one with the, with the pruners and then hang it up on top of that. Um, Sorry about that. Uh, put that up, them, them limbs up on top, uh, around the top of the vine, and and uh, put one, maybe two, on there with the leaves down. What that is, guys, is you want the bottom foot or 18 inches of the vine exposed, so they're not communicating with the limbs. They're communicating with just the vine. But what it is, is those leaves upside down when they go to using that scrape. It shakes, moves, and um, and it really, really. Uh, supercharges it. Now, problem with it is some cameras, trail cameras, because we want a camera at each one of these, the cameras freak out. Why do the cameras freak out? Because the wind starts blowing, these become wind drag, and these vines get to whipping more than they already would. You know, you put any obstruction up here, the wind's going to grab when they move, and the, the uh, cameras trigger like crazy. If your camera doesn't do it, I highly recommend doing this. Maybe just one. A lot of the times I don't put two, I just put one. Put them on there make sure you zip time at the top of it or something guys though because they will uh, fall off uh, so that's kind of a bonus uh, the second bonus that we're gonna uh, actually talk about this one here guys would actually be the option c that uh, you see me use out on the farm uh, kentucky uh, in kentucky uh, quite a bit um, if you're going to have these on the um, uh, you know available or on the plot let's say a shot plot or on the edge of a field where your transition uh, or your line of travel comes out into a field let's say these work real well um, I'm, I'm not a big promoter of putting them in food plots but there is a need for them and a place shot plots are one of them what you do is I start guys with a t-post I put a t-post in the ground and then I go and cut about a four inch uh, um, uh, tree, you know, alongside of the, in, in, in Kentucky, maybe it's red bud, maybe it's a white oak, maybe it's something like that. And, you know, 10, 12 foot tall tree, four inches in diameter. Drive the T post in, if not two T post, put the tree in that wrap wire around it so it stays there. And then what I do is I cut another one about a two inch or two or three inch, something like that and cut that one about 10, 12 foot long. And what I do is I'll show you the, obviously showing you some, some pictures of this, but looking at the diagram too, I put this in, lock it up in there so it stays in the limbs that are available. 
um, and the tree holds it up, run it out there, and then I, I wire the back of it down to the tree or to the post so it holds it, um, kind of gives you some strength. So when you're out here 10 foot, like I said, away, I run the, the paracord um, to that. And a lot of times, guys, too, what I do is, like we talked before, that paracord will come back down to this tree here, and I'll wrap that in there, uh, knot that off. So if we have to adjust it up and down, we can do that from the side. We don't have to do that from the, um, you know, rate standing in the scrape kind of thing. So a uh, another one of another one of the bonus uh, features here would be a, uh, the the uh, bonus um, option D would be uh, having the tree and having a not having another tree such as this to, to tie to you know 10 20 feet away from it there's just nothing there but this is the line of travel and that's right where it needs to hang in an intersection something like that right what i do guys is yes this is where the the you know i guess tree huggers that get a little antsy but um what i do is i get two two by fours treated two by fours i lag one on the back side of the tree I, like, I, I go up about two to three foot on the other side of the tree, which would be the side that you want the licking branch on. I put, I lag, so I lag this two by four in the tree, and I go on the other side two or three to foot, three, two or three foot higher, I lag it in on that side. What that does, guys, is then you put a, you cut a, um, you know, a two to three inch sapling, 10, 15 foot long, and you hoist that up in and you put it over the top one under the bottom one so what that is is as it sits on there it's sitting on this two by four it's under the other one so you're supporting the weight then i run wire around or a ratchet strap around the tree there so you can keep that adjusted as well in the future and those boards do not kill the tree as most you know some people think so the last the last topic that we're going to talk touch on guys is why why uh why these work and what are they what is it i get that question all the time what is that thing that i see you using that mock scrape so what it is guys is it's a communication tool like no other it's a magnet that i call it the information station it's a spot now can you get them to travel like we said before when we started this 10 15 20 yards to get there sometimes you can they see that vine it's a magnet sometimes they just come over to check it out then it's a repetitive thing but we want to hang those in in the line of travel in the if you're building your transitions um, or if you're uh, hunting off a natural um, or a promoted line of travel a trail hang goes in the center of it because it, it, it does a couple things the deer all the deer especially the bucks have a preorbital gland um, you know a glands on their forehead and what it does is the bucks as they get into the, the later in a the year they sweat from that then gl glands open it releases a distinct smell each buck has a different smell that's how they they put that on there they're rubbing that on there you'll see them get the vine stuck between and it's always at the base of their pedicles and they are leaving their scent on there uh, so that's how they communicate buck to buck but what we want that guys is that's why we want them 36 to 42 inches off the ground so all of the deer use it that's how they talk to each other that's how they communicate and they are natural all over the woods. But if that is a permanent fixture at your stand location on the line of travel, promoting that, that transition area around the farm, you are, you are promoting and exp expending more daylight movement on the property. You're getting more information stations uh, to check checkpoints, if you will. And you are, it, you're just burning daylight hours, burning hours in general during the cruising part of the year it's it's huge it's a big big tool um so every one of these has a camera something that we didn't i didn't list in the number in the 10 topics every one of them has a has a camera on it a stand and a camera my goal is for you guys is this i touch on this with my clients maybe this will resonate with you maybe it won't most properties that i go on um, are get a picture of a buck once and then Maybe the next day at the same time, you get him again. Well, then two days, two or three days later goes by and hopefully you get another picture of him. That's usually how most farms work. My goal is for you guys by hanging these, promoting these and building with that, building and promoting a line of travel such as through your transition and your corridors is to when that buck, you get one picture of him, you get four pictures of him. You get three, four, five pictures of him 
if you have that many stands on the farm and because he's going around he's scent checking each and every one of these and if they don't uh, stick their nose right to them during the cruising time of the year guys they don't have a lot of time to walk physically walk up to them um, but I can guarantee you that they're scent checking them or it's a visual check on each one of them they know where they're at and it's a checkpoint it's an information station like we say guys and it's a huge huge deal uh, if you're not using them you're missing out here are a few uh, so four different options of ones that you can use like I said I'm not a big guy to put one in a food plot because um, one shouldn't be hunting on the food plot if you're if you have a, a licking branch in a food plot you're probably obviously hunting to the food plot to me a food plot's an attractant a water hole is an attractant a licking branch is an attractant now we will run the water hole and a licking branch together or a water hole and a mineral station together something like that the only time I, I like to put them in the food plots is when it's a hunting plot such as a shot plot that we're drawing the deer to that we know it's just uh, it's a it's a spot for them to stop last topic that we'll touch on and there's just so much that is involved with these licking branches guys that you can you can you know really gain a lot on these but one of the biggest things is, is this guy is when a buck comes in and he's going to use that it draws his attention. You're hanging them at 25, 27, 20, whatever that effective range is, comfortable ranges for you, um, you know, off the stand. He's coming into that. He's not paying attention to you. He's coming into it. He's now, that's why you're 27 yards off. I wouldn't recommend being 15 or 10 yards off from him because his head is in the air looking around. Now he's, he's got his eyes in the air. But in most cases, when you're 25, 27 yards away from guys, they are not the eyes are not on you they're focused on that and his attention is on that leaving you know getting the scent leaving the scent on there and it gives you an opportunity um, for a shot huge tool huge piece of the puzzle um, so over the years I just keep collecting this information on these what works how to use like my rope to the tree thing so you don't have to touch them you can adjust it from the side all of this plays into it I'm sure you guys watching this have some you know tricks that you use of your own these are my tricks when it comes to licking branches. Have one at every stand. Use these tips. Make sure that you're, you get them out there early and make sure that you have one at every stand going into this fall.